Did we like the Titanic unit or not? Stick around and find out. Hey guys, welcome to Home Sweet Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Ashley and I'm a homeschooling mom to one. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you an honest review of In the Steps of the Titanic, which is a unit from Campfire Curriculums. Now, if you are new to Campfire, you've never heard about it. They are unit studies. They're made for the entire family. So your youngest all the way through high school. And if you don't know this about us, we love Campfire curriculums. So if you want to find out more about Campfire, I have a whole playlist that says Campfire curriculums. You're going to find flip throughs, do a lesson with us, all those wonderful things. You can also visit their website, campfirecurriculums.com. You can find them on Instagram and on Facebook through the Campfire crew. I'll try to put all that information down in the description box. But they're an amazing company who does a wonderful, wonderful job writing unit studies in a living book format. You're gonna love them. Like, I learn something every time we do one of these units. I love these units. When you purchase from Campfire, they're going to come as a PDF download. You can print them at home. You can have a company print them for you, or you can use them digitally like on an iPad or a computer. It's really up to you. Um, I have more videos that kind of explain the how to's and you also get directions when you purchase the units, you'll get a whole directions download. So you'll know exactly how to use it. So if you have any questions just about in general, how do you use Campfire curriculums? You can leave them down in the comments and I'll be glad to get back with you. So let's get into this unit. So this is In the Steps of the Titanic. I actually printed the advanced guidebook for us. Um, I only have one son, he's an eighth grader. And so I just print the one and I read from it and um, I'll show you, you know, how we use it with him. So to start off with, I wanna talk about what we read to go along with this unit because I know a lot of you love to have extra readers. There is a suggested book list that you can find on their links page of books. You know, if you wanna add books to it, you can. My son independently read the I Survived, The Sinking of the Titanic. He had actually never read any of these books before until we read the Joplin Tornado one and he loved them. And so now I've had to purchase them anytime I see them like at Goodwill, I pick them up. But he really enjoyed this book and he just read it a little bit each day. I know you're gonna be like, he's an eighth grader and he read that book. We read for enjoyment. We don't worry about levels and things like that. And he really enjoyed this book. So that's the book he read independently. Now I purchased Dear America, Voyage on the Great Titanic. But what I realized as soon as we started the unit the story within the unit was so good, there was no need for this book. Now, if you have an older child that you want them to read something independently, this might be a good one. It's kind of written like a, a journal entry. And so this would be a great book for that, but we ended up just putting it on our shelf and we didn't read it because like I said, the story that's in the unit and the way the unit is written was so engaging, we didn't need something else. It got to be a little redundant between his independent book and the unit and this. So we just put this up, but if you're looking for another read, I read this to myself and it was a good book. So there's that. And then this is the book we use a ton. This is the DK Eyewitness Titanic book. We reference this book a lot. Now this is really just a factual book. You can't just sit and read it from cover to cover. I mean, you could, but you wouldn't want to read it out loud. But I used it, as you can see, all my little tabs here. As I went through the unit, if there was a page that would go with one of our lessons, I made sure to tab it with the lesson number so that we could turn to this and look at these pictures. Now, there are wonderful pictures that are included inside the unit, but I thought this book would be fun to have, and it was very helpful. Um, it had a lot of pictures of the inside of the Titanic, but we did not sit here and read this book you know, for facts or anything. That's just not what we did. Um, you, talk, blah, blah, blah. you talk a lot about the Marconi operators, and so they had a really nice picture of what the room looked like. And so we referenced this book throughout the entire unit. So if I was gonna buy anything extra to go with this, it would be this book right here because we referenced this a ton. All right, now we're gonna talk about how I actually set this up. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm buying these units in a variety of ways. I've used three ring binders. I've used flex binders. I've used my pro click. I've tried just about everything and it really just depends on the mood I'm in when it's time to bind these. So for this one, I actually decided 
to use one of these. These are like the, I think they're called the Better Binders. They're from Staples. And um, I know at our Goodwill, you can find them sometimes. This one I actually picked up at Staples though. But I really like them. They're very sturdy. And I thought it would be good for this one because this had a lot of extra pieces that I ended up needing. So the way I printed it, I just printed it by lesson. So like this was lesson one. And then right behind lesson one, I had the core connections. Now, a lot of times I'll print those separately. Again, it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Um, so I put lesson one's core connections. And then I just put one of these folders because the Skip If You Want pages had some biographies. They also had, I'll show you, some interesting printouts. Like this is a biography. And then they have this really neat printout. It's like a two page spread. And I just tucked that in that pocket so that when we got to that part of the lesson, I could pull it out and we could lay it out, you know, and have that. Also anything we needed for the activities, like we were talking about Morse code. So I printed this out a little sheet. I would just tuck it in there and that way we would have exactly what we needed for each lesson. Um, and then like in this one for lesson two, I just have a little tab of where the core connections start. So I'd know where to turn to. There's our core connections for that day. And then anything extra, like I printed um, some extra pictures for us to look at. And then he had to make a promotional poster and so he used Canva and made his poster and I just tucked it in here. So we would have it. And then um, there is a map that you can print on the links page. We use that map throughout many of the lessons. So if I knew we needed it for the next lesson, I would just take it and put it in that folder. So it would be so accessible and I wouldn't have to go looking for it because that is so annoying. So this is the way I bound this one and it worked perfectly fine. So any way that works for you to bind it, you know, that's what works. So that's how I put it together. Um, now, let me show you what my son uses because a lot of times people get confused with Campfire because there isn't any worksheets. And they're like, well, you know, like what are the kids doing? Where's their work? A spiral notebook works perfectly fine. I was just a little extra this year and I ordered these books from School Nest. I have a whole video talking about them. The history timeline we have used. Um, so anytime there was an important date or something like that, we just go into our history timeline notebook and we write it down. We use that for all of our unit studies. And then we have the history notebook. And so this is where if it, we were prompted to write, and I'll show you. So they will prompt for you to take notes. Let me see if you can see this. Right at the top, I just put a little sticky note that said notebook, meaning this is what I wanted him to put in his notebook. And it'll tell you, like it says, pause, draw a few ships or circles on some notebook paper and label them. And then at the end of this lesson, there were some questions that you could answer. Now you could just discuss these orally. You could write them anywhere you really want to, but I'll show you what we did. So in his history notebook, and like I said, a spiral notebook would work. Just gonna kind of show you where he took some notes. So this is where he drew the ships. This was his answer to the questions. And then um, here's some more pages like where you drew the flags. This was one of our activities we did. This went with where you had to draw a layout of the ship if you wanted to. Another thing, um, that we did, so the top is from a different unit, but the bottom is where he did metal work, which is one of the activities. And so instead of writing about it, we just took a picture and put it in here. This is where he had to interview. Um, he interviewed someone that was on the Titanic and then the iceberg experiment. And then here, this is child labor. And this was actually one of the think tanks. I like to use those for written narration. They're really good questions. And so we would use the think tank and he could answer some of those in written narration style. So that's how we use this. Um, I'll just show you some more pages of things that we've done. So experiments and some more writing. 
and he just kind of kept up with all of it here. This was when we did photo mosaics. And so it just all goes in here. So this could be done anywhere. You don't have to buy these notebooks. I'll link them below if you want to use them, but that's just, that's what we used. And then for the language arts portion of it, the core connections, we just used, um, well, I didn't even bring that over here. We used the language arts, well, no, it's just a regular notebook. I think it's like a grade level notebook. That's where we did the language arts. If there was anything he needed to write down, we were learning about commas and things, we did that. So anyway, these are both great notebooks to have. So we have the science, we have the history, and we have a grade level one that we keep all of our information in, but a spiral notebook works perfectly fine. All right, let's see here um, what else I wanna talk about. So, like I said earlier, a lot of the question is, well, what are the kids actually doing? We just read and we do a craft, is that it? And that is absolutely not true. Campfire is amazing. It provides so many learning opportunities. It's great. So, no, you're not just reading and doing an activity. So, you do have a lesson. You will have a lesson that you will read through. You will pause and talk with your family or you'll pause and you'll notebook, all those things. There are cool teacher moments that are listed in here. I know, let me look on my list because I wrote some of them down so I wouldn't forget. So I know one day we went outside and we walked the length of the Titanic and that took us quite a while in our neighborhood. So that was a lot of fun. Um, there are videos to watch. There is a VR, um, like a Titanic tour, like a VR tour that was really cool. We had to choose a person. There was a list of people. There's a link that takes you to a list of people that were on the Titanic. We closed our eyes and chose somebody and filled out the ticket. And then at the end of the unit, you can go back and see if your person survived or not. You do that at the Titanic Museum. If you've never been to that, you need to go. It, they're amazing. But we did that activity. And then um, there was a cool teacher moment where you kind of label different parts of your house to be the different parts of the Titanic to kind of put it into perspective of like where everybody is, you know, when all this is going on. So there are notebooking opportunities, there are hands-on opportunities, so many great things. So like I said, you have the lesson itself, okay? And then within the lesson, after you do your faith talk and your think tank, you do have some optional activities. Optional meaning you do not have to do them that day. You can do all of them, none of them, some of them, whatever you want to do. So you had one about Morse code and you had one about communication where you um, make a telephone like out of a cup and string. And it's a great, it, it's a lot of fun. It's actually in my do a lesson video. So you also have some skip if you want activities that you can do. And then the core connections are going to provide you with some more learning. So there are tons of activities. Let me just tell you a few of them while I look at my notes here. So um, there is metal work that you learn about metal work and then your kids get to practice that. There are recipes. So the meals that were served the last night of the Titanic, there are recipes for you to recreate that. You get to create a timeline. We made a promotional poster. We did a family tree. We learned how to break a lock. Um, and that does go with the story. I mean, you're probably thinking, I don't want my kids to know how to break logs, but it goes with the whole story. Um, you create questions for a Titanic game. And then you also get to like put your hand in like re that really cold water. If you go to the Titanic Museum, you get to do that too, um, to see how cold the water was. All of that is listed in the guidebook. All those cool teacher moments and optional activities are inside the guidebooks and they're amazing. Now, if you want more, there are the core connections. And let me just tell you what we did in the core connections. So the core connections covered science and language arts because that was a very history heavy unit. So for science, I'm gonna list everything off that we covered. We covered density, buoyancy, surface area, water displacement, the Archimedes principle, the scientific method. We created an iceberg. We talked about water pressure. We talked about tunnel vision and our brain, hypothermia, and we talked about rust. Those were all the things that were covered within the core connections. And I want you to keep in mind, this is made for everyone. So it will have, you know, what you read to everybody, and then it will have an extension for your middle schoolers and high schoolers so they can take it further if they want to. As far as language arts goes, we talked about the fundamentals of journalism. So how to find your research, credible research, how to take notes when you get that research, um, how to report, you know, the things that you do find. And um, here was his finished article. So he interviewed um, 
Eva Hart or Eva Hart. I had previously read an interview and watched an interview with her and I took notes myself. And so on this day, I had him come up with the questions and I knew her story from watching the interview and reading about her. And so I just pretended I was her and I answered his questions. He took the information that he got and we put it into a little newspaper setup that I made in Canva for him. So that was kind of his finished product for, um, language arts. He didn't have to do an interview. That's just what he chose to do. So that was his, and he liked doing that. That was a lot of fun. We also talked about, though, not only did we learn about journalism and how to report, we also talked about the importance of writing dates correctly, like making sure that you know exactly how the date should look, how to abbreviate the months. We talked about commas, contractions, apostrophes. I mean, just tons of things. And we did those kind of things in his grade level notebook, just a piece of notebook paper, that's where we would go over those types of things. Um, and with the core connections, I had somebody ask, like, do you do it at the end of each lesson? Sometimes we do. It really depends on how heavy the lesson was for us. If it was a lot of information and we'd already done a lot, I didn't think he could handle the core connections that day. We would just move them to another day. It really didn't matter what day we did them on. Just the fact that we got them done. So, I love the core connections. I think they're amazing, and I feel like we learn a lot from those core connections. And then if you need proof, like, are my kids learning anything? I promise they're learning something. They're going to pick up something from it. But what I loved about this unit was it came with a game, and you were prompted within the lesson to go and make questions for this game. Now, on their links page, they already have a list of questions that you can use if you don't want to make up your own. But it is an excellent way to see what your kids know if they can come up with questions and answers to play the game. You're really going to see what your kids know and remember when they get to put their questions down on these game cards. So when you get this file, you're going to get the game PDF as well. And so it's just um, two boards here like this. And we just laid it out on the ground. And... Um, we actually use like little bitty Lego figures for our people, but um, you also get the question cards. So it says Titanic and the Atlantic. And so you have a place to write your question and then a place for your answer. So what I did was I went ahead and used the questions they provided. And then I gave my son some cards so that he could make up some questions. And then I made up some questions and we had so much fun. We actually played this more than once because it was a lot of fun. And I was very surprised at how much he remembered because sometimes I wonder, like, did he learn anything? Like, was he listening at all or was he just thinking about what we were going to have for supper? Like, sometimes I really wonder. And when we played this game, I was blown away at how much information he actually remembered. And so there were some on here where there were, there were just basic things like, um, you know, who built the Titanic or, you know, just simple things like that. And then there were some really good ones that he had to think about. And so I love this game and I thought it was a lot of fun. Having this game edition just made this so much fun. So the game is one way to kind of see what your kids have learned. And then I got him just to, you know, why not? I said, take this paper and this is just a big sheet of construction paper and just fill it with all the things that you learned about the Titanic. No other rules. I didn't tell him how to do it or anything like that. And this is what he came up with. So he wrote things I learned about the Titanic. He drew the propeller. He drew the Titanic. Uh, he drew a lifeboat. And then he just like bullet listed the things that stuck out to him. And I thought, well, this is a great little keepsake of the things that he thought were important from that unit. So this is how we kind of ended off the unit. So overall, we love this unit. We've always been interested in the Titanic and this just really took it to a whole nother level. It was just past those basic facts that you always hear about the Titanic and it really dug deep into those stories and made us connect with those people that were actually there. And let me share one more thing that I did. I think it's so important when you have a face with a name. And so I just went on Google and found pictures of the people that were talked about the most, like William Burdock and the captain. 
and Frederick Fleet, who was a lookout. And so anytime that we were talking about these people, I would have these pictures out. So he would know, this is who Officer Wilde is, and this is where he was when it was happening, or this is Frederick Fleet. And, you know, we would just move these pictures around and we use them throughout the entire unit. And that was just really helpful for us to have their pictures. So just wanted to share that. All right, so that is our review. We loved it. I think you should try it out if you've ever been interested in the Titanic or you're just looking to try out a campfire unit. This is a great one. So if you have any questions about this Titanic unit or campfire curriculums or homeschool in general, let me know. And as always, thank you so much for watching.